Ever since Shamir Sweeney started experiencing harrowing symptoms three years ago, she's been looking for answers. There's not an answer to my pain. She's one of the estimated millions of Americans living with long COVID. Now the third leading neurological disorder in the U.S., impacting 15% of those who get COVID. When we go to the doctor sometimes, we simply can't put into words because we've lost our words, right? Um, word association is difficult and so many neurological issues that have, uh, have come about because of long COVID. But after years of searching, doctors are finally getting some answers to what's happening in the body. Northwestern Medicine just released new findings using years of data that it says can help us better understand the biological causes of symptoms. Of the more than 1,800 patients tested, 85% of patients said their quality of life was worse. About half had cognitive impairment, 45% had altered lung function, and 83% had abnormal CT scans of their chest. And the data show middle-aged women were most likely to display symptoms and seek treatment. There is a, I think, misconception that a lot of these individuals, um, a lot of the symptoms may be overblown or quote unquote in their head. This study, I think, helps dispel that. If you run the right tests and you, you hear their stories, you see the patterns and uh, it's uh, everything but in their head. Dr. Mark Sala, co-director of Northwestern Medicine's comprehensive COVID-19 center, says the findings show long COVID isn't just one thing and can't be treated with a one-size-fits-all approach. Someone who is in the ICU is going to have a very different constellation of findings on their imaging uh, and their symptoms than someone who is treated at home uh, who never had to enter the hospital. And so what it really emphasizes is the need for uh, multiple specialists to have eyes on these patients. It comes as researchers are also discovering another potential breakthrough, a gene linked to long COVID. This could pave the way to answering a big question. Why do some people get long COVID while others are spared? And then hopefully, potential preventative measures for those at risk, and maybe even treatments for people impacted. Patients like Sweeney, grateful for answers, but wanting more. While so many great things have happened to me, and I'm extremely grateful for all of those things, getting married, moving to a new city, um, having my own home now, um, there are times when I still sit and cry because while so many great things are happening, I'm in still a lot of pain. So, Dr. Seale, one of the big questions for a long time has been what happens to these long COVID patients? Why does this exist? There's a lot of new information now in the study, but still lots of questions, right? What else is in the works to help get people some answers? Yeah, Holly, I think the big sort of million dollar question here is why is somebody like Ms. Smith and in the piece you just saw, why does she get symptoms of long COVID? And why does somebody like myself, Holly, who's had the virus twice, why am I not getting long COVID symptoms? And that's kind of the big question we're hoping to answer. Um, but Holly, there is some potentially exciting news. There is a big study the government is running um, where they're, text they're testing a drug a lot of us have heard of, Paxlovid, uh, to see if it can kind of help pre uh, prevent those symptoms in long COVID patients. Because Holly, one of the sort of ideas here is that there's tiny bits of virus left over in the body that's causing that inflammation. If, if we can get rid of that virus, we can hopefully get these patients feeling better. So a lot of us are looking forward to the results of that big, big study. Dr. Sale, thank you so much. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.